All right, I think this is one of the last assignments uh, before the review. This is unit one, assignment five, lesson five uh, for algebra two. This is just more uh, a, of a continuation of the uh, transformations that we were learning about in the last video. Again, um, the different types of uh, graphs. Okay, first and foremost, we have an X graph. And what an X graph is, is um, <clears throat> excuse me, um, just a, a 45 degree line so that up one, up one over one, um, up one over one um, for the slope and it's a straight line. Pretty basic, um, most people know about that one. Um, and then we have a thing called a quadratic. Uh, a quadratic is something that uh, has an x squared in there. And uh, the basic idea of a quadratic is uh, you have your point at the origin, and it's what is known as a parabola. So you go one, two, three, and these are at heights of one, four, nine, because they're squares. Or um, if you use the trick, um, if you start at this this origin, this has a difference of one, three, five, and the next one would be seven, nine, et cetera, et cetera, in between. All right, so those that is a, uh, a quadratic, put that name on there. Okay, that's a quadratic. Now, this is very, very similar to a square root. So a square and a square root are pretty close to the same thing. Um, and how so is um, it looks like this parabola, but it's sideways, and there's only like the top part of it. But again, uh, one, two, three, we'll have heights of one, four, and nine, Again, differences of one, three, five. Okay, and this again is a square root. All right, and then we have a cubic. A cubic is something to the third power. And so again, it's uh, in the middle and it kind of goes both ways. Uh, this is a cubic. And so again, uh, if I'm going to the third power, these things are to the third power. So if you are doing a quadratic where it's to the second power, one squared is one, two squared is four, three squared is nine. Same idea with a cubic, but this time it's to the third power. So one to the third power is one, two to the third power is eight. So you have heights of one and eight from, uh, from the baseline. And just like there's a square root to a quadratic, there's a cube root. To a cubic. And again, it's the same thing, but just kind of sideways. Up, and go down, then middle. I go one, two. That's the same thing as saying one, eight. Um, last but not least uh, is the absolute value. absolute value and again what an absolute value looks like is this is the important piece and then it's a perfect V up one over one kind of slope up one over one kind of slope let me get that down here up one over one okay so these are the different things so I think today we are kind of talking about these cubics and these cube roots and learning how to manipulate them. Again, how do you manipulate a general equation? Let's say I have an x to the third. All right, um, let's 
can say I have a negative, um, say plus two minus five or something like that. Okay, what these things do? The minus is called a, uh, a vertical reflection. Okay, vertical reflection reflects vertically or reflects over the x-axis. The x's lie, so you would think that like in the x-axis, okay, this way is positive, this way is negative. So you think when you see a plus two, you would think you would be going to the right. Okay, you would think that you would be going to the right, but the x's lie. So it's actually left two. The x's lie. And this is the y-axis, where again, this is positive and negative. So the x's lie. So if you see a plus with the x, you're actually moving to the left. So the x's lie, but not the y. So this outside number, this minus 5, is a y, and that is not lying to you. It is down to 5. So the, the plus and minus with the x is lying to you. So the x is lie, but not the y. So the, these are the basic transformations that you're going to see uh, the majority of the time. Okay, and how you would say these in words, this is a vertical uh, reflection. This is left two. This would be down. Uh, okay, not that scientific, it's just uh, the, the tough one is the vertical reflection. There's also a thing called a vertical stretch, but we don't see that very often might see it from time to time, and I'll explain it when, when I see it. All right, so given the basic equation for a cube root, again, that's the cube root of x, create an equation that is right 2 and up 1. All right, so here we go. <clears throat> So think of this kind of like as a parenthesis of that x. All right, so the right two, that's an x motion. So the x's lie. So you would think that that would be a plus two, but that's an x motion, so it has to be a minus two, because the x's lie. Then up one would be an outside plus one. And that would be right two, up one. Okay, here we have a cubic, which is an x to the third, and so we want to go up 5, left 4, and then reflect vertically. Here we go. So f of x, x to the third. Okay, up 5, that's, that's an outside, that's a y, so it is up 5. Left, you think it's a minus, but because the x is y, that's a plus 4. And then reflected vertically is an outside negative. And that's all she wrote. Okay, here again, we are asked to find the equation of a cubic. That is up 3, left 5, and reflected vertically. Okay, so this is a cubic, up 3, left 5, reflected vertically. So these are all the different things. I did all the appropriate movements, so there it is. So in this uh, problem, we have this 2. All right. What I want you to do when you do these problems is do all the pluses and the minuses first. So here, there's an outside minus 3. So this is down 3. OK. So you find that center dot. Now, typically, what you would do is you go up one over one, up up another one, and it would be a, at a distance of eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. And down 
and eight like that. Okay. What does outside two does? This is called a vertical stretch. <clears throat> and what a vertical stretch is, is this. Think of the differences that we have in between these dots. Like, so for instance, I'll, I'll kind of zoom in here, okay? Where if I zoom in, I have the center dot and I have these two little minor dots, and then I have these other dots out here. And what I'm saying to you is this. This has a vertical difference of one between that first dot and that second dot. And from that uh, dot to that dot, again, it has a vertical distance of one. Same way going down, it has a difference of one and a difference of one. So the vertical, the up and down distance between these dots is one. What you do with a vertical stretch, that outside number that is multiplying on the outside, is you multiply that vertical difference. So if this has a vertical difference of one, I multiply by two, this is now going to have a vertical distance difference of two. Same with this, vertical difference of two. So the distance in between the dots gets multiplied. All right, so what I'm saying to you is this, back to the uh, actual problem, is where the original, you're supposed to go up one over one. Well, if I go up one over one, now I go up two over one. So only the vertical di distance gets changed. So this has, still has a, uh, a horizontal distance of one, but I have to go up two to get there. Okay, so from that dot, I have a grand distance of eight, but I go up two, again, not up one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It would be right there. Okay, so this was over eight. So usually you go up one, eight, one, up one, eight. Okay, similarly going down, where, where these should have distance of one and eight, which they do, but the vertical difference is not one, but it's rather two. Okay, from there it's two. So I still get the same horizontal dif difference, uh, distance, but the vertical changing is different. I'll try to explain it one more time here, maybe because I know this is kind of a little bit confusing. Okay, typically this is what your picture will look like. Up one, over one. Up one, and then this has a grand distance of eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so this has a distance of one. And this has a distance of eight with vertical changes of one and one. Okay, similarly going down. Okay, grand distance of one, grand distance of eight. Okay, and so that's typically what it is. Now, <clears throat> now, the exact same stuff is the same, however, these vertical movements of one now get multiplied by whatever that outside number is. So this is now going to be vertical distances of two. Same one and same eight as far as the horizontal, but it, it, it just gets taller. Okay, then that one it gets established, and so I go up two over one. Up two from that over eight. Down two over one. Down two over eight.
Okay, so they want us to manipulate this graph. So what I see is that there's going to be a flip flop, left four, down three. So it's flip flop, left four, down three. Do all of the motions first. Do all the pluses and the minuses first. So let's go left four, down three. So there's our center dot. So left four, down three. And then, so we're going to, we would go up one over one, up one over eight. However, with the flip flop, we're going to go down one over one, down one over eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so this has a vertical stretch of two, and this is what, left one. So again, let's do the motion, so left one. So here I go up one over one, three, but instead of going up one, we go up two. So up two, one, three, five. So notice how these distances between these dots vertically are a vertical distance of two. Vertical distance of two, up and down. Where they were one, those vertical changes are now two. So again, do the motion first and then worry about the outside. Okay, uh, I see that this is a square root. Okay, things that I notice, uh, that this is left three, this is down four, and this is flip-flop. It's typically what this graph would look like is right here. That's what it would look like. But it's left three, down four, and it's flipped upside down. So the left three would be a plus three, the x is y, not the y, so that is a minus four, and then a flip-flop is that minus on the outside. Okay, this is an x to the third. <clears throat> Things that I notice is it is left two, it is up one because typically it's right smack dab in the middle. And notice how this vertical change is now at two where it's supposed to be one. So this technically has a vertical stretch of two. Or you're supposed to go up one to the, get to that first point, but this is up two. All right, let's do all the motion. So right two would be a minus two. Up one plus one. So the X is lie, not the Y and a vertical stretch of two. So typically this would be right smack dab in the middle, over one, one, over one, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So here's where that new first uh, center dot is. Here's where that new center dot is, and so it would should be right there up one but notice how the first dot is up two so that has a vertical stretch of two describe the transformations okay so from the f of x to the g of x so f of x is a basic square root of x and so what is different? Well, I see that there's a minus. There's this minus two. Oops, wrong way. Line to me, fire. And up one. So the X is live, but not the Y. X is side to side, Y is up and down. All right, so this has a vertical reflection.
It went to the right, two, and up, one. Same idea coming right from a, a cube root. So this uh, is a minus four, so that is right four and down eight. That's it.